Today I'm going to teach you how to make this steel magnolias armadillo cake. If you love cake decorating tutorials, don't forget to subscribe and let's make some awesome. Now the mother of the bride is surprising her daughter with this groom's cake and I'm super excited. Their favorite movie is Steel Magnolias, of course. I grew up loving Steel Magnolias as well and no one has ever asked me to make an armadillo cake before. So I'm super excited about this. Now I start all of my cakes with a sketch. I start by doing an overhead sketch, a side sketch, and then a front and back sketch, or in this case, a head and butt sketch. Now what this sketch helps me do is not only envision what the cake is gonna look like and decide what to tackle first, but it also helps me uh, with scaling my cake. So I drew the cake to scale, and then I drew the cake board that it's gonna be on, and then I started drawing away the shape that I wanted this to be, and then I'm able to take that and know exactly how much I need to carve off the sides. And sketches like the side one help me determine how tall I need to make the cake as well. Now, just like the movie, the inside of this armadillo is going to be made out of red velvet cake. Now, a classic red velvet cake is actually very light and spongy and is not at all good for carving or stacking a lot of height to it. So what I'm doing is a red velvet pound cake, and that gives you the density that you need to be able to carve away at this and also will give you the strength so you can stack this and get the height that we're looking for. Now, as you can see, we're working with very tall cake. And the reason for that is if you have a thinner cake, then you have cake frosting, cake frosting, cake frosting, cake frosting. And it takes a lot of all of those layers to get the height that we're looking for. And then you're gonna wanna add a dowel rod and a plate in between to give the stone structure that we're looking for. But if you use really tall layers and less frosting, it's gonna be a lot stronger. And we can get that height with just a couple layers and we don't need to worry about creating an internal structure for this cake, which is best in my opinion. Now when baking really tall layers, you wanna cook it low and slow. If you're cooking three inch tall layers, you cook it at 325. And if you're cooking at four inch tall pans, cook it at 300. Now that means you're also going to have to add a lot of time and there isn't a formula for this. It's kind of just watch, watch the cake and check it and just see how it's going. Now this was a half sheet cake in a four inch pan and I cooked it at 300 degrees for about two hours and 15 minutes. When they slice open this cake, I'd like the inside to completely be red. So I also made the frosting red for the inside of the cake. Now typically with red velvet cake, you use cream cheese frosting, but cream cheese frosting is notoriously soft and it's not gonna firm up and hold these cake layers together the way that we want. So I made a white chocolate cream cheese frosting and that chocolate in there is going to help the cream cheese frosting actually set, but still taste like cream cheese frosting. And so that's what we're using for this. Now the shape of the armadillo is actually quite wide at the bottom, but it's very narrow at the top, but it's also very tall. So I'm gonna leave the dome on this top layer of cake to help with the height. I'm also gonna add another thin two inch layer at the top that's just gonna give us that last little bit of height that we need, but I'm not gonna frost the whole top because I'm gonna be cutting away so much of that. I'm only gonna add it to where I'm gonna want that height. Now I'm gonna take the cake to the freezer so that the frosting in the middle can harden up before we start carving. Once the frosting is firm, you're ready to start carving without worry about the cake slipping apart. So the first thing I do is cut off the big sections I know I'm not gonna need. All four of the corners at an angle and then angling the back and you're left with a lot of cake shards. Now you can just snack on these, you can turn them into a trifle, you can turn them into cake pops, whatever you want. But keep these big chunks, you're definitely gonna want to enjoy those. Now remember, you could always carve more, but you can't carve less. So I just go, go a little bit at a time until I'm happy with this shape. Make sure to also cut out a little area for the head and the tail. Now armadillo's outer hard shell kind of hangs over their skin underneath. So as I'm cleaning up the edges, I'm also making sure to undercut a little bit. You can see how thin I'm carving away layers as you get to the end, just to get that smooth look that we're going for. Now, the armadillo kind of comes in on the sides, so I'm gonna make sure to also carve out some of this area as well, to give it that rounded shape that we're looking for. Also, this is where the back leg is going to stick out a little bit. So I'm gonna go a little bit deeper over on this side. One of the things that I will always do when I'm carving a cake is I make sure to step back so I can better picture the cake and how it's looking. Uh, when you're standing so close to it and you're carving away, sometimes you miss something obvious about the shape. 
Now I'm always constantly turning the cake as I work to make sure um, that I'm getting everything evenly and seeing it from all sides. So right here is where the back leg is gonna go. Up here are where the front feet are gonna stick out and right here is where the head is going to be. And you just wanna make sure that it's even on all sides. You can see we have our highest point right here in the center and then it comes down to where the tail is gonna be. I'm happy with this. I'm gonna quickly do a crumb coat. Now it's going to go back in the freezer until this sets completely. All four paws and the tail I'm going to just make out of fondant, but the head is actually gonna be a little bit on the larger size and that would just take up a lot of fondant. And so one of the things that cake decorators do to fill in space uh, is to use Rice Krispie Treats. So I've made a batch of Rice Krispie Treats and I'm going to mold it in the shape that I want the head. Now I just made a small batch of Rice Krispie Treats and I make it more marshmallowy than I like traditional Rice Krispie Treats and it makes it a little bit easier to mold. Now I left the back side a little bit ridged because it's going to fit into that gap that I've made. Uh, and it has a fat head that comes down and then narrows very quickly at the end. I always just thought armadillos were just gray until I started doing research for this cake. And I realized that around the sides and the bottom, their scales, it's almost like the gray has been uh, wiped off and the top of their scales are actually kind of this pinkish ivory color. And in fact, that pinkish ivory carries through their scales all the way across their body. The dark in between the scales is just more prevalent along the top as well. And so for the frosting, and the fondant, we're going to be using this uh, grayish, pinkish, ivory color to start with, and then we're going to add those darker hues later. So I've taken some of that same white chocolate cream cheese frosting, and I'm just going to be covering our Rice Krispie treats with it, and then we're gonna refrigerate it so that that frosting can firm up. At this point, I moved the cake onto the final board, and I put parchment paper around the edges so that as we frost it, we don't get our board dirty. And now I'm adding that pinkish ivory frosting. We want to create a nice thick layer, about a quarter of an inch thick, all over the cake. All right, all covered and ready to go back in the freezer to let this white chocolate cream cheese frosting set. Now to get this color for the frosting and the fondant, what I did was a large squeeze of ivory one drop of red and one drop of black. Be really careful with the red and black. It can go too strong. Uh, so you wanna make sure you have a really large batch to work with for that. Uh, you could always like just use a toothpick and add just like a half a drop of red and a half a drop of black. I started by adding uh, just the ivory and a touch of red and it just ended up a little bit too pink. And by adding that little touch of black to it, it brought out just the right amount of gray while still being the ivory pink shade that I was hoping for. Let's start by making the front and back claws. So they have four fingers and these two are shorter while these two are longer. So I'm gonna kind of create a rock shape and then I'm going to slice right down the middle and then slice on the way around the sides, much smaller portions. And now I'm going to soften these edges to take away the square and to turn these into more tube-like fingers that taper at the front. Now the front claws are gonna go in front of that larger bulge, so I just cut them at an angle so that I can slide them underneath the cake. But these side claws are going to go inside the curve of the side of the cake. So I'm actually gonna cut this at more of an angle and then I'm gonna smooth this out. For the ears, I'm gonna take a large rose petal cutter and cut two. Pinch the fat side. We're gonna let that dry. Now for ease of sticking it in later, I'm gonna pinch it around a toothpick and then I'll be able to add that to the cake later. A trick for helping this dry, I wrapped it in parchment paper and I used a chip clip to hold it pinched at the base and that will allow our ears to dry open. Now for the tail, you want to take a large piece of fondant and you want to roll it from thick to thin. If it starts to get too thin, just tap it back into place. What we're going to want this to do is to wrap around the cake 
One of the unique things about armadillos is that while they're walking, they're long, but to defend themselves, they can turn themselves into a ball. And that is because uh, part of their outer armor is made of plates that can move and slide over each other. That's how they can turn into that ball. Now the tail is made of a swirl of plates that goes down the tail and that's what makes it so easy to move and adjust when it wraps itself into a ball of tail and also become a part of that. Using my flexible pointed tool, I'm gonna come and create these diagonal lines going around the tail. Now I don't just want to make a dip, I want it to look like this side of the tail is kind of hanging over the next plate. And just keep going all the way down the tail. And now we're gonna use the small petal to create the marks in the tail. And set that aside to dry. I'm gonna use round piping tips in two different sizes to create the round scales on the back of the hand. Now you can press the circles directly onto the fondant or you can put some plastic wrap down and press that way. You'll get a much more subtle press if you use the plastic wrap, so just decide the look that you want. Now we're gonna cover our head. Lay your head down and layer some rolled out fondant around the top. This is so light, you can just pick it up. You wanna wrap the fondant around to the back side and where it meets, we're gonna cut it. And then you just rub it until it is nice and smooth. I'm going to add the mouth. Make sure to do both sides. Now the scales tend to come down towards the snout and up around the head. So I'm just kind of lightly marking where I'm going to add the scales for the eyes. Create some snakes that taper at each end and using some fondant glue or clear alcohol, attach those to the side, then attach a round circle for the eyes and then a smaller tube down below. Now I'm going for the softer scale look. So I'm putting some plastic wrap on here and I'm just going to start pressing scales into place. You can use one circle bigger, do a couple of big scales down the center. Start with the big scales and then fill in with the small ones. Now an armadillo shell or, or outer protective layer doesn't go all the way to their joints, it actually kind of ends and then their skin and their neck or their arms or their tail come out of that. And so I want my shell to do the same thing, but that means the shell is going to end and overhang where the tail comes out of. And what about that area where the tail is coming out of? I want that to also be covered with fondant. So the first thing I'm gonna do is roll out a very thin layer of fondant. I'm gonna wrap it around the edge and the bottom and the neck and where the tail comes out of the cake to give us uh, some leeway as we attach everything else. I rolled out a thin layer of fondant, and now we're going to wrap it around the bottom of the cake. So I'm only wrapping half the cake at a time, so you wanna cut a nice clean line up the front and up the back side. You wanna make sure that this fondant comes all the way up to the neck area, but we're actually gonna trim it fairly low down here on the sides, because really it's only going to be a little bit that doesn't show. Leaving some space where the head is going to be and where the shell is going to overlap, I'm gonna trim this down the front leg and around the sides. And then I want to flatten this out so that when we do add the shell, there's not gonna be a big bump in the difference. So we wanna smooth this hard edge into the cake itself. Now we previously angled the edge of our hand to be able to fit underneath our cake area, but as you can see, it's not always perfect so now that we're here, we're gonna go in and uh, make any adjustments that we need to make to our appendages. So that actually fits under fairly nicely. Cut off anything that you might need to cut off to get this to fit where you want it. We really want this to merge in nicely. 
Now for the tail, I'm just gonna start cutting away at this and continuing to try to put it in place until I'm happy with how it fits. Oh, I got it on the first try. That actually fits really nicely. Now the tail and the feet are actually just sitting on the cake board, so they're really easy to attach, but the head is actually going to be up inside the cake and it needs to hold a little bit of its own weight, which is another reason we made it out of Rice Krispie Treats instead of all fun and all fun, it would be really heavy. Rice Krispie Treats is obviously a little bit lighter. So my trick is toothpicks. We're gonna add a bunch of toothpicks into our head and then we will slide those just right into the cake. Now it's time to add our final outer shell to our armadillo. Now you can add this in one large fondant piece or you can add it in multiple different pieces. Uh, the pieces consist of the big bottom shell, that's one piece, and then it has a bunch of stripes along the back, and then it has one more big outer shell. Though I'm gonna do it in individual pieces. I think it'll be easier to control and I think it will look better. First thing I'm gonna do is kind of give myself some markings and guidelines to go on. So this is going to be my first big piece that I'm gonna put on. Then I'm gonna add the individual stripes and then I'm gonna put the final piece on over here. You wanna roll out a large sheet of fondant about a quarter of an inch thick, kind of in an oval shape. And then we're gonna lay this piece on the back of the cake. Then trim where that plate's gonna end in the back. And like we did before, we're gonna soften this into the cake so that our next layer won't have a bump. And then we want to trim and round the corners of this shell. And then trim the fondant around the tail, making sure it overhangs a little bit, right? We want that space between the underside, the tail, and this outer shell. You can see now why we created that lower layer of fondant because the shell doesn't go all the way to the bottom and the edge of the shell doesn't need to be pressed right up against the cake. It can be a little loose. Now we're gonna take our round piping tips again and we're gonna create the pattern all over this back shell. Remember, it doesn't need to be perfectly even. And then don't forget to fill in with the smaller ones. Then cut strips and start adding them on overlapping them with your last shell. Trim the edge and then press that next side down into the cake and smooth it out. Now we're gonna take the plastic wrap and the small petal cutter and we're going to press in the design across the top. For our final piece, just gonna drape a big sheet of fondant over and then start trimming. Make sure to soften those edges as you cut. And now we're going to go back to our round markings. All the fondant is done, all the texture is done, and now we're going to add the paint. So I'm going to use my airbrush with some black airbrush paint. If there's anywhere that you don't want covered or you don't want covered as thickly, you can always use like a paper towel and hold it into place. Like I didn't want the back of the head and the sides of the head as dark, so I covered them up with a paper towel while I sprayed. And then when I was ready, I took the paper towel away and then I just lightly sprayed that area so it was still gray without being that super, super dark color. So. Next up, now we're going to wipe the paint away. Take a damp paper towel and we're going to wipe. And as soon as it gets too dark, fold it. Everywhere where we want this to be lighter. So it's definitely on the bottom and working our way up to the top. And what should happen is all of that texturizing that we did should show up even better 
And then the bottom should start looking that lighter color. Now, the darker the paper towel, the more color will stay on. The cleaner the paper towel, the more color will come off. Now, if you wipe off too much, it's an easy fix. Just spray a little bit more on, and then you can wipe again with the darker towel. And finally, don't forget to paint the eye. And just a reminder, if you don't want black hands for days, you might wanna wear gloves. Just a thought. Don't forget to add the ears. I like to use needle nose pliers rather than my fingers to pop them down inside. Now the ears are at the top of the head and point out. In the comment box, I would love to hear what other iconic cakes you'd like to see me make. Now I can't cut into the cake because this is for an actual wedding and I don't think that they'd appreciate a cake with a big slice out of it, but I will try to take some pictures at the reception and include a little slideshow here. Now I'm going to deliver the cake and you should watch the next video.